We've come a long way since the wood grain riddled age of the original Atari home console and while it's easy to lament the flaws of the modern day gaming industry, it's important to recognise all of the positive changes that have been made in recent years. Sure, unstable launches and toxic microtransactions plague the medium today, but we're far removed from the mass hardware failures that ruined the early Xbox 360 era, the obnoxiously long loading times which marred the PlayStation 1 and its successor, or a lack of onboard memory common with every system prior to the seventh generation of consoles. And with the dawn of a new age in gaming quickly approaching, we thought it might be the time to stop and appreciate some of the advancements in tech which we take for granted now. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 mind-blowing gaming features everybody takes for granted. Number 10, suspend slash resume. This may seem like a very minor feature, but the advent of putting a console in stasis and then returning to it the next day is extremely underappreciated. Today, it isn't necessary to exit out of an app in between play sessions, and things can usually be picked up exactly where they were left off upon returning. In the old days, consoles simply didn't have the wherewithal to stay running for days at a time, and if left for too long, hardware malfunctions were essentially inevitable. That is no longer the case though, as both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 can be put into sleep mode, suspending operations until the player returns. For gamers who grew up constantly waiting for games to load and discs to spin before playing, this is an awesome innovation. Today, the only thing standing between us and the game itself is a simple press of a button, and it is glorious. Number 9. Instantly Sharing Gameplay when platforms like YouTube and Twitch became popular in the late 2000s, demand for methods of capturing gameplay skyrocketed. Unfortunately, at the time, options were fairly limited. PC gameplay at the time was frequently marred by watermarks, and console players were forced to shell out upwards of $100 for an external capture card. Fortunately, we've moved on from those days, and everyone with a console has at least some capacity to share gameplay now. Both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One are capable of streaming to Twitch, via the press of a button, and video sharing has become way more ubiquitous than ever as a result. Those who take these features for granted need to only hook up a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360 and attempt to stream gameplay to remember just how difficult it could be. Now, anyone can become a streamer or a YouTuber fairly easily, for better or worse, considering that means people like me end up on your screens. Sorry about that. Number 8. Plugging headphones into controllers Playing games with headphones used to be kind of a burden. Consoles themselves almost never afforded a direct way to plug them in, and 3.5mm jacks weren't exactly standard on tube TVs. In fact, when consoles like the original PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 reigned, most gamers simply accepted the middling quality of the TV speaker's output. This issue persisted for quite a while, and even the seventh generation consoles didn't parlay with wired headphones very well, though certain Microsoft supported products could be plugged into the 360 controller. Today, while Sony still forces consumers to buy one of their brands of headsets should they want to connect wirelessly, the headphone jack in both the Xbox One controller and the DualShock 4 make easy, quality listening experiences so much easier to set up. No longer do players have to deal with lesser quality external speakers or chain themselves to the TV via a way too short headphone cable. Number 7. Cloud Saving It's hard to believe nowadays, but the ability to save games used to be something of a luxury. It was a downright revolutionary feature first debuted on select NES cartridges, though it eventually became a definite necessity as games grew to be far too lengthy to finish in a single sitting. The first and second iterations of Sony's PlayStation consoles were marred by a lack of onboard memory, and older fans likely remember the frustration associated with renting a console for the weekend only to skimp out on the memory card and lose an entire day's worth of progress. No joke, I got an Xbox 360 for Christmas one year and because the original didn't need a memory card, my parents just didn't pick one up for the new console. As a result, I've played the opening to Tomb Raider Legend probably about 100 times. The current console generation is now so advanced though that saves don't even have to be tied to a specific console. Rather, game saves are connected to a player's account and can be accessed remotely. Let me tell you, this is a godsend if a console happens to break and you need it replacing. Number 6. Players You Download 
Before the dawn of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, the concept of downloading games was nearly unthinkable. Gamers were totally used to slipping a disc into an optical drive and playing it right away. And even pre-Steam PCs relied fairly heavily on physical media. Today though, things are different, and while waiting for games to download used to be a major pain before broadband network speeds increased, it's become even less of an annoyance as most AAA titles can be played in part while downloading. This isn't true of all games of course, some claim to be playable while offering little more than access to the main menu, but others can boot up an entire story mode or an extra sub mode before the download bar has crawled the entire way across the screen. It's an innovation which will hopefully be improved upon in the future, and it has alleviated many of the concerns associated with purchasing a game only to be barred from play by an obnoxiously large patch or update. Number 5. Voice Commands Doug came across as more than a little hokey when the feature was first introduced with the initial version of Microsoft's Kinect back in 2011, voice commands for consoles have grown to be much more useful and much less intrusive. When the Xbox One first launched, Microsoft seemed particularly keen on implementing voice commands into their games. There was a relatively large song and dance concerning in-game implications, though few gamers actually opted to yell fire volley at their TVs while playing Rise, Son of Rome. Come to think of it, few players actually played Rise, Son of Rome at all. Today, the tech has taken a back seat when it comes to gameplay, though it can significantly improve the functionality of the overall console experience. Users can launch and quit apps, take screenshots, and even power off their consoles without actually pressing a button. A small yet noticeable boost in overall convenience, it almost feels like something out of a science fiction movie when compared to the archaic gaming tech of yesteryear. I, for one, welcome our voice-controlled overlords. Number 4. The Dawn of Cloud Gaming as previously mentioned, we appear to be on the cusp of the end of the console itself, controversial though it may be to gamers at this point in time. With platforms like PlayStation Now, Vortex, and Google Stadia, gaming seems to be focused less on hardware ownership and more on bandwidth connection speeds. Some may have yet to realize it, but the dawn of this new era of cloud gaming has already arrived, and it's possible to stream games to both a PS4 and a PC without actually owning them on the hardware. It's not something though those who struggle to post a ping below 100 in a match of Call of Duty will be all that interested in, but it could be a cost-effective alternative for those who want to check out the newest titles without putting together a thousand dollar rig. What's more, it's now possible to play most PlayStation 3 and 4 titles on the PC via Sony's cloud gaming service, which is something nobody would have ever believed to be possible a few years ago. Number 3. Preloading before launch there is quite literally nothing worse than heading out to the store and purchasing a physical copy of a game only to return home and realize there's a 30 gigabyte patch standing between you and the game itself. In fact, the slower internet speeds and less equipped consoles of the last generation frequently meant that players simply had to go to bed and wait for everything to install overnight. Fortunately, preloading has mostly made that a thing of the past, though it does come with one major caveat. Players can now download their games hours or even days before they officially release to ensure that they're ready to go once they finally launch. That said, this almost always requires a pre-purchased copy of the game, which does admittedly make sense. Still, it's a great way to get around the awful grind of downloading and waiting which we've become so familiar with. In the future, internet speeds may be fast enough to circumvent this issue entirely, but as it stands, this is an underappreciated method of getting around that inevitable day one install period. Number 2. Remote Play Remote play still seems to be on the peripheral of the gaming mainstream, but with advancements in tech and the recent announcement of the Google Stadia, that all seems set to change, and playing games in front of a traditional TV or monitor may soon be much less common. As winter melts into spring, plugging away at Red Dead Redemption 2 in the dark just doesn't seem quite as appealing, and some gamers simply give up on the hobby altogether during the summer months. Yet, gaming has become more accessible than ever this generation, and thanks to the advent of game streaming, gameplay no longer needs to take place in the presence of an actual console. It isn't quite perfect yet, especially for those who have below average network speeds, but it's a burgeoning technology that will soon revolutionize the industry. Streaming a game from a console to another platform may seem unnecessary to some, but for others, it's a much needed new way to play. Number 1. VR Gaming 
Virtual reality has been a pipe dream of many digital enthusiasts since the first diodes and wires were made to render primitive images on a tube TV back in the late 1960s. Though it would have felt like nothing short of science fiction at the time, we finally have access to consumer-grade products that truly teleport the player into the world of the game. It all might sound like a bit of a fad, but VR gaming does seem like it's here to stay. There are detractors, of course. I work with a bunch of them every single day, Scott Telford, and it's far from an absolutely perfect medium. For the current generation of VR headsets are far more than novel and seem to provide a great basis on which to expand. All the gamers will remember crude attempts at extra-dimensional gameplay like the Sega Activator or Nintendo's infamous Virtual Boy, and few appear to genuinely appreciate how very far we've come since then. The one sticking point critics often cite would be the lack of a so-called killer app for virtual reality. But that's hogwash. Just stick on Beat Saber or Astro Bot and prepare to be converted. One of us. One of us. One of us. One of us. So that's our list. I don't know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you take these features for granted as I do? And would it be a pain to no longer have them and go back to the archaic times of the PlayStation 2 era? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching. Bye.